All right, so today I want to show you how I euthanize, package, and freeze rodents for my snakes to use as frozen thawed food on a long-term basis. And before we jump into it, I want to put a disclaimer out there. I'm definitely not going to kill any animals on this video. This is a video for the general public. I definitely don't want anything that shocks anyone, especially if you really like rats or mice. Don't want to shock any rat lovers out there. As a matter of fact, rats and mice are pretty cute. They make really good pets and sometimes they can be trained to do little tricks and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, that's probably one of the hardest things is actually euthanizing some of these rodents. And you don't realize it until you get into it, and then you're up against the wall and you actually have to euthanize them. I'd say that's probably the hardest part. As a matter of fact, I got some meat chickens. I went with a bunch of guys and we decided, all right, we're gonna get a bunch of meat chickens. I'll keep them here at my house, up in the mountains. I was gonna raise those chickens. And then when they're big enough, everyone's gonna come over and we're gonna actually butcher them and clean them and everything else and then we can have some fresh chicken right pretty good idea the problem is is I grew up those chickens everyone came over and nobody would kill the chickens it's like all right who is gonna chop the head off the chicken you know so we can eat tonight have some fresh chicken and unfortunately it was me I was designated the the chicken head chopper it's, it's kind of a weird job but nobody else would do it and let me tell you that's kind of what you're up against when you're raising your own rats and mice. It sounds like a good idea until you actually have to get into it and you do it. And let me tell you, some of these rodents can be pretty cute. So that's kind of the barrier. I'd say up front, probably most people would rather not do the euthanization and probably just buy the frozen rodents from some of these suppliers online. You can actually get them from like Rodent Pro or something like that, have them shipped right to your door. Then you don't have to deal with the euthanization, which I'd say is the hardest part. So I'm going to take you through the process pretty much from beginning to the end, show you what, what kind of equipment I use and how I actually do it. All right, so this is the equipment I use. It's really simple, pretty much just homemade gear. I don't have anything really fancy. And essentially what I have is I have just a piece of, I guess you'd call it Tupperware or plasticware. And the thing I really like about this one is it has multiple locks on all four sides to really secure the lids. And then essentially what I did is right here, I cut a hole and I actually cracked the plastic a little bit. Probably the best way to do this would be to like clamp wood on either side and then drill through the wood and the plastic plastic, you probably wouldn't crack it. And then what I did is I just used um, like a, uh, you put these on car tires, the little valve stem on the car tires, and then I took one of the valve stems core extractors and removed the inside so it is just, uh, just straight, you don't have to press a valve or anything, just straight directly into it without any valve stem or anything needed. And then right in the top I drilled a tiny, tiny little hole right on the top just to let some gas escape. And this is essentially just my little gas chamber that I use for CO2 euthanization. And you, you pretty much you read the regulations on a lot of these state websites, and they say really the only accepted way to euthanize rodents is with CO2. Essentially what it does is it puts them to sleep, and they just kind of go to sleep, and it numbs them, and it's really fast and simple. So this is kind of my initial setup. When I first started, essentially what I do is I put a paper towel right in there, put the rodents in, and then I close it up. And what I would actually do right at the beginning is I actually use this little thing right here. And this is actually a little thing you can actually put a CO2 cartridge in here and it screws right in. I can kind of show you how this works. So this screws out and then this screws in. And if you actually screw this in all the way, what it does is it pierces is the top. It's a one, one shot deal. You really can't use it again. It's just a one shot. <laughs> as soon as if I actually twisted that, it would be ready to go, but it wouldn't last very long. It would eventually leak, I'm pretty sure. And you could only just pretty much use it once. So I don't think you could use these more than once for what I'm doing. So you basically you screw that in. It's ready to go. You screw this in. And then what I would do is I would actually put this up against here with my rodents in the tub and then slowly 
release the CO2 and then it would actually euthanize my rodents. And essentially what I do is, <laughs> when I do this every time, the problem is with this technique is it was really cheap, really simple. The problem is, is these cartridges are about a dollar a piece. So you're always, you know, wondering, you know, if, if you have uh, just a few rodents in there, is it really worth it to use one of these? Or if I should really pack it full? And essentially what I was doing is I got to the point where I was almost euthanizing too many because I was trying to save money on my cartridges and just really fill in the tub. The problem is, is I'd have a lot of extra that would fill up the freezer and I wouldn't really need to euthanize that many and I'd end up euthanizing too many and wouldn't have enough for my snakes, which is not another problem. So essentially what I did is I went to a bigger gas tank for the CO2 and let me show you that setup. All right, so if you're kind of wondering what actually my, my rodents look like, these are some of my mice that I'm considering euthanizing at some point. Essentially, they get to where they're really super old. These guys, they start getting, usually when they get really old, they start getting kind of, uh, kind of rough, kind of really rough looking. Like they start getting really, almost like they're starting to lose their fur or something. And then a lot of these females, if you take a look at these females, they actually almost look like they're pregnant, some of them, and they just, they just get really fat and they don't have any babies and they just kind of sit there and eventually if I didn't actually euthanize these they would probably die of old age here within a couple months because these are super old mice they only live about a year maybe a year and a half and I'd say these guys are probably well past a year and if I don't euthanize these these will actually pass away so essentially what I do is I put the top on like this and then I'm not gonna actually euthanize these but this is how I do it so this is actually my new setup here so I uh, clamp all four corners and then what I do is I actually set this outside my sliding door so it's not in the house I actually put it outside because I don't really want CO2 in my house I know it euthanizes rodents I don't, definitely don't want high levels of CO2 because it'll make you sleepy you definitely don't want that and essentially what I do is this is my new setup here and this tank is the bomb let me tell you this is what they put on like the soda machine machines and if you buy some tanks like this I think it's like 50 bucks for a used tank or something like that and then you can get them filled for like eight dollars it's super cheap and let me tell you this thing will last me for over a year euthanizing week after week tub after tub just on and on and on it just seems like it almost never wears out it's pretty amazing and then I have this regulator on it so the way I have the regulator set up is one of these gauges actually shows you the internal pressure of the tank so you can see on this one if it's still in the green or if it's it's getting near the red where it actually needs to be replaced. And then on this one, this is actually the PSI coming out of this tube right here. And the eye can actually dial it in right here. So what I do is I bring it all the way down to about one PSI, just barely coming out. And then what I do is I put this right in here like this. And then uh, what, uh, essentially what I do is I have this all set, everything's all set, and then I just turn the main handle right here on the top of the tank. I just turn it on here for about 30 seconds and then turn it off. And really what you can do is you can adjust the, the, the amount of CO2 that comes out here with this knob and you can also adjust it here with this knob. So you can actually slow down, you can increase the PSI and then slow it down with this one. I just prefer to keep this straight open and then adjust this gauge right here. It's really easy. And I can actually put links below for this and everything else that I can find. I think I just got this gauge over on Amazon I think I got most of this stuff on Amazon and let me tell you that saves so much money going to a big tank like this and I want to put these rats or these mice back because I'm not going to euthanize these mice right now although I do have some snakes that would love these I have some mouser only that I usually use frozen mice that are about this big because they won't eat anything else and I pretty much supplement them on myself as a matter of fact I'm kind of a sucker for a lot of these rodents and sometimes I won't euthanize some of the old ones. I'll just let them live out their old age and just kind of keep them as pets. They're so cool, which is kind of a disadvantage. You really don't want to do that. Does, it does cut into your bottom line, but it doesn't really matter since I have so many rats and mice and a lot of food, and I just kind of pick and choose through my racks. 
So if you're wondering why I put a paper towel down, look, those mice were only in here for a couple minutes and they already made a big mess. You know, it's it's, it's funny how, me how messy those mice are and they make a really big mess really quick. And this makes it really easy. You can just kind of swap this out, put another one in for the next batch. All right, so I want to show you pretty much what the final product looks like. Essentially what I do is I have a big Ziploc and I put a paper towel in here. And the paper towel just absorbs any moisture that is, you know, kind of keeps them from getting freezer burned, absorbs. You can see there's a little bit of condensation. Sometimes they get a little frosty if they're in there too, for too long. And if you see kind of how I pack these, what I did essentially is I laid them side by side all in a row. And that's really what you need to do because, you know, the, the thing I actually started with is that what I actually did at the very beginning is I opened the bag and I just started throwing them in there and the problem is is all the tails start getting wrapped together into one big massive ball and the tails get all bunched up like that and it's in and it's nearly impossible to get them apart without actually going in and thawing the whole bag so what you do is you can actually you kind of freeze them like this to where they're all individual now you can mix them all together and they don't get tangled up which is kind of the easy way to do it that way you know and this way I pretty much just dump them out and then I sort them by size I go through and sort them you know small medium large extra large and jumbo and then I sell them to the pet store and let me tell you these are like these are like gold when it comes to the pet store they buy them they you know pay pretty much wholesale what you'd buy them at Roden Pro I could probably get more if I had to deal with the public but I like to just unload a whole bunch of them and get rid of them let me tell you it's it's really nice to kind of unload the freezer at the pet store with a whole bunch of them and then which essentially what you do from here is you can use them you know pretty much at your leisure so essentially what I do is I warm these at room temperature for a few hours and then I heat them up under uh, uh, like a heat lamp that you use like for baby chickens and that's the way I do it some people just kind of throw them in really hot water thaw them that way but I prefer thawing them at room temperature because I really don't like my rooms to be wet it's just a, kind of my pet peeve I don't like Wet, wet rodents. I like to thaw them at room temperature and keep them dry the whole time. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Predator BP asks, what is my favorite ball python gene? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, it's kind of hard to choose a favorite gene because there's over 300 base mutations in ball pythons and you start mixing them together and you get a lot of really cool looking snakes. But I'd say if I was to choose just one gene out of all of them, it would probably have to be the bamboo. And this snake around my neck, this is a bamboo. This is Bobby, my bamboo ball python, pretty much here every day in front of the camera here doing all the videos. He's a really cool superstar snake. He is a really neat snake. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the things I really like about the bamboo is they have really aggressive feeding tendencies. You know, they talk about picky ball pythons. Bamboos are just the polar opposite of most morphs. Some people say, you know, you really can't, you know, determine that as far as one of the characteristics of a morph. But I say I would disagree. You can definitely see it in the bamboo and in the recessive desert ghost. I see both of them are really aggressive feeders when it comes to feeding time. This guy almost never misses a meal and pretty much the same with all the bamboo hatchlings. Once you can get them up to the point where they're you know past the mouse hoppers which is kind of tough for any ball python. Once they get a little bit of weight on them they will eat anything and those are the snakes that usually when I open the tub they come flying out after the rat. All the other ones just kind of hang back just waiting for me to give them the rat but the bamboos are super aggressive eaters. The other thing I really like about the bamboo is that it's a really impressive standalone morph. It almost comes head to head with the spider gene. I'd say the spider is pretty close to the bamboo. The only problem with the spider is the spider has the neurological issue or the head wobble. And with the bamboo, there is no genetic defects at all. No kinks, no duck bills, no head wobble or anything. It's a, it's a really safe gene. The other thing I really like about the bamboo is if you actually breed a bamboo with a bamboo or anything else in the blue head cystic complex 25% of the time you get an all-white snake with blue eyes a blue-eyed leucistic and let me tell you it seems like that is everybody's favorite snake when they come up to my table at the reptile shows everyone's like can I hold the white snake it's pretty amazing that that comes from a snake like this if you actually produce the super or an allelic complex in the blue-eyed leucistic so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you next time
Thank you.